This is what's called a root flare. And one of the things that you're going to be hearing a lot about if you're going to be purchasing or buying trees, um, or as you start learning about uh, our urban forest and, and, and trees being planted along roadways and things like that or in parks, you never heard much about the root flare in years past, but it's becoming more and more important to know what a root flare is. And this is an extremely good example of what a root flare is. Um, it is where the tree is coming down and it's using its roots as a flare, uh, as a buttress to kind of protect this tree and, and to, to anchor it. Um, this is uh, some species of oak. It may be an overcup. I think it's an overcup oak. Um, it's really hard to tell all the different species of oaks. If we could find, if anybody has good eyes and can find an acorn, we can probably tell for sure. But it may be a little early for the acorns to be, be ripening. Um, Old ones, yeah, we need one with the cup still, the cap still on it. But um, the reason that a root flare, oh, let's see. Oh, okay. Well, this is an overcup oak. If you can see why, the, the cap completely encompasses the acorn. It encompasses the oak, the, um, what do you call it? The nut. The nut. <laughs> um, so it is a, an overcup oak, which is a really neat species of oak that you never hear anything about. I didn't learn it until about four or five years ago on one of these tree hikes. Uh, I was like, what is that? I had to go research it and find out. And then they have a bunch of them planted at the Arboretum. Um, but an overcup oak is just one of the many wonderful native oaks here in central Kentucky. Um, but the root flare is extremely important because people are planting trees too deep. And if a tree is planted too deep, the roots cannot get oxygen. Uh, they cannot <clears throat> perform the way that they were meant to perform. So the quickest, actually the slowest way to kill a tree is to plant it too deep. Uh, a tree will just sit there and sit there and sit there for years as long as it's not being watered too much. The quickest way to kill it is to plant too deep and then drown it because a tree will die within weeks if it's planted too deep and sitting in water. So the thing that you have to look for, and it's very difficult when you're buying a young tree because the root flare is not, as, not, not as pronounced on a young tree, but what you want to look for is at the base of the trunk, any tree that you're buying, Make sure it has just one, just a little bit of a taper or a, a flare at the bottom. Um, not a taper, because that would mean the wrong thing. So you want to make sure that there's a flare at the bottom and you never plant it any deeper than where that flare is at the, at the ground level. So this is, again, it's an extreme example, but you, you really want this type of look for those, those top roots to go. And I know all of you that are mowing grass say, oh, I hate this. And they want to, people want to come in and fill up on these roots. That's another good way of killing your trees. So you need to let these roots form and breathe, and you don't want to have dirt up against the trunk of a tree. So remember the root flare when you're purchasing, or even if you're trying to diagnose maybe a tree that you've planted over the past few years, it's not too late to go back and try to excavate some of that soil. Because one of the, the bad things that landscapers are doing is piling too much mulch up on your tree trunks. That's a, that's a no-no for good uh, tree health. You need to pull that mulch away and try to expose where that root flare is and make sure that air is, is hitting that. Because remember, there's a difference between what you see here. You see you've got bark on this. If you dig down into the ground, there is a bark of sorts on the roots, but it's not made the same as the bark that's exposed. So if you start piling stuff up against this, you can get a lot of rot and decay because this type of wood and bark is not meant to be under, under the ground. It's not meant to be constantly kept wet or moist. And that's where insects and mice and all sorts of stuff will take advantage of that and you start getting decay and disease happening on your tree, uh, on your bark. So pull that mulch away and let this function like it does, like it does here.